Hi everybody, it's Thursday night and here we are at Now You're Cooking, ready for another demo. Uh, the 4th of July is coming up, which means Bath has its annual Heritage Days, which we have not been able to have for the last two years, so we're super excited that it's back this year. We've got Art in the Park, Fireman's Muster, the Smokers Grady sh Grader shows with the Ferris wheel and everything. Lots of stuff going on, so make sure you go on Visit Bath website and see what's happening, or stop by the store and we have some pamphlets and brochures for that. We will be open Friday, Saturday, 10 to 5, Sunday, 10 to 4, and Monday, we're going to try to close at 2 o'clock. Um, it's a little fluid, but 2 o'clock is what we're aiming for so that our staff can get out and celebrate the holiday as well. And Monday night is the fireworks here in Bath, which is always really, really fun, fireworks over the river. So come check it out. Um, and lots of other stuff happening. Uh, next week, we're going to make an Ina Garten recipe, which is a tomato feta pasta salad, perfect for summer, um, summer picnics. The weekend after that, or the Thursday after that, we're going to be making baked Alaska, which is really fun. We made one the other day, and it was great, and everybody really enjoyed it. So we're, we'll take some of the intimidation out of that. Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about charcuterie boards. There is no recipe for a charcuterie board. You can put lots of different stuff on it, but we'll kind of talk through some of the ways to put one together. Um, the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to make a chutney. Um, chutney is basically fruit and vegetables, fruit or vegetables with sugar and salt and vinegar all cooked down. Um, this is going to cook for about two hours before we put it into jars and put it away. Um, so we'll just get it started tonight and then we'll probably finish it off tomorrow, we'll take some pictures and um, maybe some video and share that with you tomorrow when it's all ready to go. Um, super, super easy. I'm going to turn on my heat and this stove cooks really hot um, low does not really get too low so what i've done is taken the grill from one of the other stove tops one of the other burners and put that on there because um, i'm definitely going to be able to get it hot enough but i won't be able to get it cool enough um, just want a really low simmer we don't want anything to burn um, so i have there's a recipe that is linked to this um the amounts of stuff and what you put in it are kind of fluid also so um, i'm doing apples um you can do pears you can do mango you can do a combination but i'm going to do apples for my base those are going in then i've got the same amount of onion i'm also putting some carrot in and i've got a bunch of fresh ginger and this is all going to cook down and get pretty mushy. So you don't have to cut things super, super small. Um, the ginger, fresh ginger can be kind of peppery um, and spicy, but it's going to cook for so long that the flavor is really going to meld into the whole thing. So it's not going to be super, super gingery. I have salt and sugar. That's going in. I have raisins. You can use craisins. You can use yellow raisins. You can leave them out, whatever you want to do. Um, but they just add a, I don't know, a, a dried fruitness. A dried fruitness. I just made that up. They add a dried fruitness to the recipe. Um, then I have apple cider vinegar. And that's the only liquid that's going in, but the apples and the onions are going to impart a whole lot of juice into there. So it's going to be plenty of moisture. And then I'm just going to put in some beautiful orange zest. You can use lots of different um, spices in here. You can use nutmeg, you could use um, star anise, cardamom, all kinds of different stuff in here. Um, what I suggest, which is what I suggest with most of my recipes, is follow the recipe the first once or twice and then just start throwing things in and see how you like it. It's not brain surgery, nor is it rocket science. Um, if it doesn't taste good, well, you've wasted some veggies, put them on your compost, or some fruit, put it on your compost and try again. But most likely it's going to be good. Um, and I do recommend when you're adding spices, start with small amounts because you can always add more, but you can't take it out. All right. 
And then we'll just eat this orange later so that's not wasted at all. And I'm going to stir this up. So I'm not putting in any other dry spices um, this time. I am just using the, the uh, ginger and the lemon, or excuse me, the orange zest in here. And I'm going to put a cover on that. And I'm going to turn my heat up a little bit. And when this gets pretty hot, which it will shortly, then I'll turn it down to low and just let it simmer. It's going to simmer for about two hours. We're actually going to turn it off when we're done filming and finish cooking it off tomorrow morning because um, we don't want to sit here for two hours. Um, but that's basically it. That's chutney. Simple. So moving on to our board. Um, this is a teak board. We sell these here. Um, and they're absolutely gorgeous. They're not nearly as expensive as you might think that they would be. Um, this one has been oiled. This is a new one here. Um, you can see it's quite a lot lighter. It's uh, more faded. Once you put some oil on that, it's going to really bring out the texture of the grain of the wood. Um, the other reason that you want to oil it is because these are laminated strips of wood. And if it gets wet a lot, um, dries out a lot, it's going to start splitting in between. Um, so the oil just helps keep it naturally moist. Um, you want to make sure that you get a food safe mineral oil for it. And that is all about the boards. You can use either side um, and they're gorgeous. We have quite a number of different sizes and shapes here. Um, they're really very beautiful. We'll probably post a picture of them when we're done. Um, and highly recommend those. They're gorgeous. All right. So charcuterie is a French term, which basically means a pork butcher, um, selling pork meat, sausages, all of that type of thing. Um, recently in the last couple of years, we've started using it in this country to refer to a board full of really yummy stuff, including in most cases, something porky, like some salami or something. But it also has, you know, it can have fruit and um, dried fruit and nuts and crackers and cheese and everything on it. <clears throat> so that's what we're going to go with today. Um, I have a couple of cheeses and some meat. And we'll just start talking about, first of all, number of items. Of course, it depends partly on how big your board is. Um, but generally, in the art world, you want to use a an odd number of things. Um, so I have three cheeses here. And I'm just going to put them out. This is a Stilton, a blue Stilton. Um, and what I'm going to do as I put them on, you'll see, I'm going to kind of do meat and dip and cheese and kind of not everything all together in, of its ilk. It's all going to kind of be mixed in together. So we have a Stilton there. I'm going to start with that. Then I have some uh, Manchego cheese and Heather yesterday went down the TikTok um, rabbit hole of putting together charcuterie boards. And this was a technique that she saw that we thought was really cool. Um, it allows people to take a piece of cheese easily um, without getting their fingers all over everything. And it looks kind of nice. You want to add, you know, kind of textures and different shapes and stuff just to keep it visually interesting. So we've got that there. And then I have a goat cheese. And I'll put the goat cheese over here. I unpacked these all ahead of time so they'd be a little bit easier and not as messy for me to undo. Um, so I also have Membrio, which is quince paste. Quince is, uh, I believe it's from the rose family, but it's very similar to an apple or a pear, but very tart. Um, and Membrio is a Spanish concoction. It's called quince paste in English, and it can be eaten you can spread it on toast or, um, you know, eat it with anything. It's particularly good with cheese. It's so you get that kind of sweet, savory combination. So we're just going to slice this into relatively thin slices. 
And because it's Spanish and I have the Spanish cheese, the manchego, I'm going to put this next to that. It does not have to be eaten with it. It's fantastic with either the goat cheese or the Stilton as well. Stilton is a British English um, blue cheese. So I'm going to put that, I'm gonna actually, I'm going to put it over here. It's not truly a science, but you want to keep in mind what else you have going on the board and where everything's going to be. I'm going to try to put the crackers around the edge. Um, let me just grab a paper towel. Sorry, Heather, dragging you around. Um, so we've got those items there. I have a salami that I sliced, and I'm going to put that over here, I think. And where we're just going to. Where can I get all of this stuff? What a great question. Um, there's this little kitchen store I know in Bath that has a great cheese case, um, and that would be us here at Now You're Cooking. We have the mem we have all of these items here. Um, we have everything I'm using here tonight except the chutney, which we're making, the grapes, which we get down at the grocery store, um, and these guys, my favorite online snack place. I have Marcona, Spanish Marcona olives, olives, Spanish Marcona almonds, and dried cherries, um, which I'm going to pop on there. And those come from nuts.com. <clears throat> All right, so lastly for this, these things, I have prosciutto, which I also got here at Now You're Cooking. And I cut the slices into three and then just rolled them up. A whole slice of prosciutto can be a lot for just nibbling on a cracker. It's pretty flavorful. It's fabulous stuff. Um, but it is, it's got a lot of flavor going on. So those are our main items right there. Then we have our chutney. I made this last week um, and it's, I had some at home. I've been eating it on sandwiches, on curries. It's really yummy. Um, basically I think the only thing this has in it that the one we just made is, um, a little bit of red bell pepper. So we'll put this on here, over here. And then I have an artichoke spread. We have um, four different uh, spreads from Mount Vicos. Artichoke, um, we have a tapenade, which is black olive, red pepper and feta cheese, and then a smoky eggplant dip. And any of those would be fantastic on your board. So we'll put this in a little dish. And these little dishes, um, these are from Emile Henri. We actually don't carry these anymore. Um, but you can get, we've got tons of dishes. We've got ramekins. We have Fiesta Ware, really pretty colors from Fiesta Ware. Um, so any of those would be great. All right, let's have some grapes. And I'm going to cut these into little bunches so that people can just take a little bunch of grapes. There are going to be some that are just going to fall off and be rogue. Heather, in fact, is eating them from behind the camera. So we're just going to lay these on in between our items here not necessarily to divide them or anything but just to add again color texture flavor just to up our ante here on the on the board we'll put a bunch in the middle okay and then I've got my almonds, Marcona almonds. These are Spanish almonds. They're a little different from the ones that we get in this country. Um, and I'm just gonna kinda spread these around so people can pick them up and nibble on them. But they don't have any 
place where they have to be. So we'll just add those around. We like to have them over in our Spanish section since they are Spanish. And then I have some dried cherries. You can use dried apricots. You can use other fresh fruit, fresh berries. Right now, the strawberries are amazing. Um, the fresh Maine blueberries are always good. Some of those with the goat cheese, because goat cheese and dried fruit is fabulous. So this part is not, you know, it's like, like I said, it's not, not scientific. I'm just kind of filling in the spaces giving people some ideas of what they can eat, how they can eat stuff. Okay. And I also want to mention too, um, that we have cheese knife sets, which would be great for serving with your board. Um, I have been using a lot of these, the little ginkgo ware spoons and forks. Um, you know, if you have a bowl of olives or a bowl of cornichon, little mini, um, cucumbers, which we love. Um, you know, the forks are great for that. The knives are great for spreading soft cheeses. Um, okay, so crackers. We have these guys from Urban Oven. And we have a couple of different flavors of these. These ones are a three seed cracker. So I'm going to put these. I have three different kinds of crackers. So I'm going to put these in three different places around the board. I can remember what direction they're going. And if you have too much stuff, you can always put your crackers onto a different, um, a different plate or a different board or whatever. They don't all have to go together. These are one of my favorite crackers. These are charcoal crackers. They are, they're really buttery and delicious. They're, they come from England and they're made with a vegetable um, a vegetable charcoal. They don't taste like charcoal. They don't taste like they're fresh out of the grill or anything. Um, but they're just, they're fun and they're different looking. And that's one of the things that you want when you're building a board. You want it to be kind of exciting and interesting. Let's just check on our chutney and see what's happening over here because it's steaming. So that looks great. So Look at all the liquid that's in there. So that was with about three quarters of a cup of, um, of the vinegar, but all of this juice is coming out of the fruits and vegetables that are in there. So I'm turning this down to low, 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 low. And that's gonna go for about 90 minutes to 120 minutes. So an hour and a half to two hours. It can go a little longer if it's got a lot of moisture in it. Um, just keep an eye on it so that it doesn't boil down and start uh, burning. Um, and like I said, we'll finish that off in the morning. So we'll show you what that looks like when we're, when we're done with it and ready to jar it up. And we'll show you how to do that too. It's pretty easy. So more charcoal crackers here and some charcoal crackers over here. And then I have these little toasts. Um, I didn't put any pate on here, um, but pate is also a really good one. We have a really delicious duck pate or a duck mousse with, um, it has port in it and it is fabulous. And that's another really good thing to have on there. Um, and I think of that because these are from the company that makes the pates that we carry. Les Trois Cochons, Three Little Pigs. I'll say it in English rather than wreck, wreck my French. So we'll put some of these. And again, I'm just putting these around so that you can reach all of the different crackers from anywhere on the board. And you can use different crackers. You can use bread. You can use, you know, all kinds of different things on here. Um, so that looks like a feast to me. I'm going to bring it right up close um and heather's eating <laughs> heather's hungry she's nibbling um so you can see we have salami we've got prosciutto we've got some cheeses we've got some fruit stuff going on there's plenty of crackers for everybody 
You can always have backup crackers in case you need them. Um, what do you want to drink with this? Um, red, white, bubbly, rosé, whatever you want, because it's such a mixture of different flavors and textures that any kind of wine will go with this. Um, what I would love to talk about is sherry. Um, we have a manzanilla, an amontillado, and an oloroso. Um, I can tell you what little bit that I know. Manzanilla is one of my favorites. Um, this comes from a specific town in the province of um, Jerez, which is where all sherry comes from. This is from San Lucar de Barameda. Um, and it's really hard to find anywhere outside of Andalusia. Like they don't just have it all over the place in Madrid and Barcelona and so on. Some places will have it, of course, but um, very nutty. Well, I think all of them are sherry in general tends to be pretty nutty. Um, crazy. No, just nutty flavored. <laughs> <laughs> um, it makes you nutty. Um, the Manzanilla is pretty light, um, very dry. It's my absolute favorite sherry. Um, Amontillado, I always think of Edgar Allan Poe and the cask of Amontillado. Um, also nutty, dry. Um, and then the Oloroso. Uh, we're going to do some studying and I will tell you more about the differences between them. I have learned it before, I just don't remember. Um, if you remember our live from Spain, um, my friend Luis gave me a whole tutorial on um, on sherries, but of course that was too long ago and I don't remember everything. Um, but anyway, so charcuterie boards are awesome. You, you know, serve it as dinner with a big salad or something that has some sort of healthy redeeming um, uh, nutrients. Um, you're getting some fruit in here and some nuts, so it's probably okay calcium it's all kinds of good things to be said for it but um you know great to start a party great to just have out for nibbles if you have people coming over um sit down with your friends and have this as your dinner with a side salad or something like that um just absolutely they're beautiful um and they make you want to eat from them because there's so much going on and so many different things to try and most people will find something on here that they can eat and that they like. So I think that is it for charcuterie. Um, again, join us next week for Ina Garten's tomato feta pasta salad, which will be a great thing to have in your repertoire for the summer. And after that, um, on the 14th, I believe it is, I think Diane's going to be here with me, and that's always a fun time, and we'll see what happens with our baked Alaska. Until then, thank you so much, and don't forget we're closing at 2 o'clock on Monday the 4th, but come to town anyway because there are tons of things going on, including the fireworks that night. Thank you.